Hey guys, in this video, we're gonna make this coffee table with 3D printed legs. Let's go. First start working on this project in Fusion 360, designing the legs, the body, just so I could get an idea of what this might look like when I physically make it. So originally I started off with not really knowing the design for the legs. So I started making some variations and playing around with placement to get an idea of what I really wanted to do. So I, in the end I narrowed it down to two legs and I went on social media and asked you guys which legs you preferred and ended up going with the more angled one that you see here that's 3D printing. Uh, I'm printing this right now on my Prusa Mark III S. Uh, this took about nine hours to print per leg and here they are all finished um, a couple of days later and they thought they came out really great. So here I'm going to break down all my sheets to make the body of the table. I'm putting down blue painter's tape over the edges where I'm going to run my blade across. This will help with any tear out that happens on the surface of the plywood. Uh, you especially get this when it's cutting across the grain on the top sheets and the bottom sheets. So here you see the grain that's running left and right and I'm cutting up and down. So we should experience uh, some tear out if it wasn't for the blue tape. So roughly the size of the tabletop is uh, 40 inches long, 20 inches deep, and roughly 7 inches tall. But you can make this uh, table size to your needs and what you want. And you can make it with other materials. Here I'm using just wall, not plywood. Now I'm ripping down uh, the height of the sides. These are going to be uh, around six inches. Again, whatever height that you guys want to do. Uh, this is for the storage area underneath the table. So for the ends, I put both the top and the bottom uh, pieces together and lined up the sides. And I am marking a square edge where I'm going to trim both edges off at the same time. This way I know that um, I have the exact width that it's supposed to be and that they're both equally squared together. So even if it's not perfectly square on the top, um, I'll know that the sides are exactly the same as so when I actually put in the walls on the uh, left and right that they'll be square to each other. So here I'm taking that uh, side piece uh, and marking it with a box cutter to transfer the width line and cutting it. And I'm scoring with the knife here to cut that grain so I can get a clean cut. So instead of using a blue tape, you could score the top of the surface uh, and get cut it then and then you won't get any tear out. Uh, so this part here is completely optional. This is edge banding. I am with plywood, you can see the layers of the ply, but with edge banding here, I get matching walnut edge band. Uh, you iron it on, and the glue heats up and sticks to the board. And I use a, another piece of wood just to help push it all and make it sticky and tacky. And I use a chisel here to um, trim off the extra overlapping um, edge tape. Uh, there are plenty of other tools that you can get that can uh, remove that tape for you. Here I am starting to put my dowels. Uh, I'm using dowels to joint the board and I'm making, I have the sides lined up next to each other and marking three uh, spots where the dowels will go into the sides and on the top and bottoms of the boards. So I transferred over the edges to the, to the, the transferred the marks to the edge and using my dowel jig that I have here from Milescraft to drill the holes. And here I'm transferring the same holes and using those uh, etched guides for the inside panels. And then after this is done, I, I, I go through all the top and the bottom. Here you can see me putting in the dowels and they line up perfectly. And now I'm doing just a dry fit before I do a glue up to make sure everything sits the way it should. Uh, I just don't want to have glue sitting there and then something's not working. So now I'm just uh, gluing everything up. Uh, 
So with glue, you always want to clamp everything down to make sure that uh, you have enough even pressure uh, to hold all the pieces tight together and the glue will do its thing. Once it's all clamped together, I let it sit overnight. Um, and here it is the next day, taking the clamps out and doing some sanding to uh, get rid of some of the glue squeeze out that I might have missed and uh, wiping it all down, giving it just a nice little pass to get everything smooth. Uh, with plywood, uh, most oftentimes the surface is already finished, uh, so just going over lightly with uh, 220 can clean it up a little bit. Uh, and here I'm finishing the board, uh, giving it uh, a protective surface. Uh, the, what I'm using is actually uh, a beeswax and oil mixture that I've had uh, that I made years ago and I'm finally using it all up on this project here. And uh, yeah, it's gonna give uh, a nice protective surface, the grain will pop, all the dark colors come out here. Now you can really start to see uh, the shine of the protective surface too. This uh, process is actually um, sometimes enjoyable. Uh, it's a little dirty, but uh, with any wipe on ones, it's, it's a lot of fun because it's just wipe on, buff it out. So here I'm starting to get the legs on and I haven't really decided on the positioning of where the legs should be. And you saw me laying on the floor there because everything's upside down. I kind of wanted to get a, a perspective of what it might look like on a normal, um, the top down so the design of the legs were actually kind of tricky uh, which I'm using this tiny ratchet to get the, the screws in because there wasn't a lot of space in that hole to get a screwdriver uh, over the top at an angle so I had to use this tiny uh, ratcheting screwdriver which luckily I had and it worked out um, and I, I could only do it with the screws perfectly placed into the leg and slowly drilling uh, or turning and tightening each screw at a time rotating to go back and forth. It was a pain and it took a little while to figure it out but in the end it was really secure and I was pretty happy with the way it turned out. Thank you guys for sticking around and watching the build. If you really like what you saw, please subscribe and hit that notification bell. I don't publish too many videos too often, so I won't be spamming your inbox, but it would mean a lot for me if I could get to a thousand followers. And if you like woodworking and 3D printing, uh, I think you guys would love the channel. Thanks so much and leave a comment below letting me know if you guys like it. Maybe you guys have an idea of a future project. I'd love to hear about it.